everybody, my name is Kat Nagar and I am the director of the Atlanta Historic Dance Company and I'm delighted to be here today to talk to you about musicals from the 1930s. Now when you hear the term Old Hollywood, you probably think about Shirley Temple, Fred Astaire, and Ginger Rogers, but I bet you've never heard of a choreographer and a director named Busby Berkeley. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about Busby Berkeley today. I'm going to demonstrate some of his original choreography from 1933, show you a little film clip, and teach you a little bit of beginning dance steps from the Gay Divorcee. Night and Day was a famous dance done by Ginger Rogers and Fred Astaire, and I've pulled some of the simple steps that I can teach you. Anybody can do this. So ladies, if you would like to pull out your ball gown or a flowy skirt, gentlemen, if you'd like to get your bow tie and top hat on, please join me on the dance floor for some 1930s movie magic fun. Okay, so Busby Berkeley. Um, I was introduced to Busby Berkeley in the 80s, and I had had some experience learning dances that were choreographed to some of these famous songs from the 30s, Shuffle Off to Buffalo and 42nd Street, Pennies from Heaven and that sort of thing. And when I actually saw the original choreography that was done to the tunes, it was really magical to me. And um, I really wanted to grow up and be in a Busby Berkeley musical. It really was so amazing. So Busby Berkeley was from Los Angeles and he grew up in a theatrical family. And during World War I, he was a lieutenant in the army and he was in charge of drills for the soldiers. So he had a lot of experience of moving a great number of people around the field. And as a future choreographer, this was fantastic experience. After the war, he moved to New York and became a famous choreographer on Broadway. And he caught the eye of the executives of Hollywood. So he was invited out and worked on a couple of small musical numbers for a couple of pictures. But he was rather frustrated working in Hollywood because the executives would not give him the budget for the amount of dancers that he wanted or the elaborate sets that he had envisioned in his mind for these numbers. So along comes Warner Brothers and they say, hey, here's the budget, hire as many dancers as you want, get the sets that you want, and he went to town. 42nd Street was that number and it was so wildly successful that a few other backstage musicals followed back to back, all with the choreography and the wonderful stylings of Busby Berkeley. So before Busby Berkeley came to town, musicals were basically shot with four different cameras and they were trying to recreate what an audience member would experience when they're in the theater. It was kind of static. The, the cameras were big and bulky. They didn't really move. The dancers would do things on the stage under the proscenium, but it just wasn't that interesting and it didn't translate well into film. So Busby Berkeley developed a few new ways of photographing the dancers that created more visual interest and it drew the audience in. One of the things that he liked to do was the parade of faces. So he would close up on those beautiful faces and that beautiful Max Factor makeup. Uh, he would also photograph arms and legs and body parts in an interesting way, usually in geometric sort of formations. He was well known for a one, one shot where you have the ladies standing in second position in a row and he would film through their legs like a tunnel. And that was the famous Busby Berkeley shot. Another thing that he liked to do was film from above. That's your drone shot that you have today. He had something called a flying trapeze, which was a wooden platform with a hole cut in the middle. The camera went straight down and it went up and down over the dancers. And this allowed him to get wonderful geometric patterns out of the dancers coming in and out of the, the camera range. Another thing that he did for film was invent a shot where the camera would actually move along a track. And in 42nd Street at the finale, you can really see this. So instead of say on a stage where there might be something happening here and might be something happening there that you might miss, on film, he would have this action, this action, this action that the dancers would do to portray New York in the 30s, and you would see it all. You would feel like you were right on the streets of New York and it was something amazing for movie audiences at the time. Another thing that he was known for was for starting off with the dancers on stage. The curtain goes up, you see the audience, 
and then you are transported into movie magic land with all sorts of fantastic sets and the song would end, the curtain would come down and the audience would be clapping. And it was basically like visiting Oz for the audiences of the 30s. So by the 1940s, this style of big musical numbers with a bunch of girls had gone out of fashion, but his influence lived on, and you can see some of his influence in the Esther Williams movies in the 1950s, the, the Million Dollar Mermaids with all the ladies swimming. And then there was a, a resurgence in interest in his work in the 1960s, and that's probably why we know about Busby Berkeley today. So from my time period, I would say the things that I saw that were uh, the most interesting, the Busby Berkeley influence, um, Annie, Let's go to the movies. Again, you see that parade of faces across the stage. And uh, Be Our Guest from Beauty and the Beast. And the, my favorite, Anything Goes from Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. Same thing. You, you're starting in the Club Obi-Wan, you go off into Fantasyland, and you end back in the nightclub. Magic. Okay, so here you can see a picture of the Shadow Waltz. And this is, again, that wonderful fantasy scenery where the dancers go up and down all around, the stage kind of rotates, the camera moves around the dancers, really drawing the audience in and making them feel like they're part of the number. Um, as you can see, all the ladies are holding white violins. These uh, are lit up by neon. And again, you have that great overhead shot where you, you're going to have um, uh, graphics that will come in with the neon. So here we have a picture of by a waterfall. And um, as far as I understand, this was the most expensive because they had to actually get a gigantic tank of water and uh, film underwater to get all these scenes. And again, you can see this influence in the Esther Williams movies of the 40s and 50s. So here we have a picture of the words are in my heart. And here you can see there are 54 white grand pianos with ladies wearing beautiful, lovely gowns. And it's um, very interesting when I was reading about this, the pianos are actually hollow. And they were hollow because there were stagehands that were underneath the pianos in black that would actually turn them. So I thought it was all motorized. They had some sort of mechanical stuff um, going on there, but it's actually just people that are turning the pianos around. And this is a, another wonderful one to see on YouTube. And here we have Ginger Rogers in We're in the Money. So uh, this musical number was interesting because it actually talked a little bit about the politics of what was going on in America at the time. She talks about people being in the bread line and basically the message is, hey, look right around the corner and we're gonna all be in the money. Yeah. 
welcome back to the 1930s. This is our night and day dance lesson. And what we're going to do, it, we're going to start with an honor to the right. So you're gonna to step to the right and do a little curtsy. Gentlemen, you could do a bow if you want to. And then we're gonna to step to the left, do a little curtsy. And then we're just gonna to turn to the right. So just spin, spin, spin. Fun, fun, fun. Okay, so then what we're going to do is we're gonna to step to the left. We're gonna go one, two, and take three steps. One, two, three, to the right. One, two, one, two, three. So from the back, left, right, one, two, three, right, left, one, two, three. So from there, you're gonna step on your left and you're gonna ball change back with your right foot. Ball change, right, ball change, left, ball change, and you're gonna do a little turn. So from the back, that is step left, bring the right foot behind, ball change, step right, left foot behind, ball change, step left, right foot behind, and do a little turn. Okay, so then we're gonna repeat the first part, but instead of just going straight to the left and straight to the right, we're gonna make a little circle. Left, right, one, two, three. Right, left, one, two, three. And again, with a little ball change step. Left, ball change, right, ball change, left, ball change, and turn. Okay, so from here, you're gonna do a slow kick on the right and the left. So you're gonna kick right, kick left, and then you're gonna to turn towards your right, a quarter turn, and you're gonna step left, right, left, and then you're gonna turn around. And so again, that is kick right, kick left, quarter turn, left, right, left, turn around. And from here, we're gonna go back to the first part again. Step, ball, change, step, ball, change, step, ball, change, and turn. For the more advanced dancers, you can go ahead and do the second part. If you are beginning level, you can just repeat the first part over and over again, or just turn around. This is all for fun. So for advanced people, you're going to step right and kick, hop, step left, kick, hop back, and then you're gonna do four step kicks. One, two, three, four. Right, left, one, two, three, four. And from here, just spin around and have fun, and that's the end.
and that is the end of our 1930s dance lesson. So again, everybody, my name is Kat Nagar. I'm the director of the Atlanta Historic Dance Company, and I'm delighted that you could join me today to learn a little bit about the movie musicals of the 1930s. Thank you so much, and see you next time. A sigh is just a sigh. I love you on a bet you can rely